for not only the healing of our bodies, but the healings of our mind, our brain, our emotions, our depressions. You've done it all for us, Father God. We relinquish ourselves to you, receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, help our belief to grow and flourish in the families and in everyday life. We know that you will cast this coronavirus out of the air. We know that you are for us and not against us. So tonight we lift up Jesus. We know and are encouraged by your words in Psalm 23. In Jesus' name, amen. And I was looking over Psalm 23. Many times Rumi and I will we have we of course have that by memory. How how many of you know Psalm 23 by memory? In fact, it's interesting. I heard a um, teacher today on Psalm 23, and and uh, he was saying that it's often times that we as born again believers, you know, God has everything right there in this in this book, all in New Testament, and in the phone, the Bible, you got it in the phone. Many times when we hear a verse like John 3 16, we hear it so many times that it kind of loses its its meaning. You know what I mean, right? Uh, I don't know, here in the USA, uh, you'll see a peop people holding up a sign that says John 3 16. So we all know what that says, most of us. And we may see a sign that says Psalm 23, why we know that generally also. So, unfortunately, and it's not a bad thing, but but a lot of times in Psalm 23 is read after somebody has died, right? So, uh, in many ways, uh, Psalm 23 is a daily devotion for us. Just like our Father, the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, our Father. We can say that over and over again, but it means nothing if we don't know what the words are meaning to us. Isn't that right? So, Psalm 23. I am so... My mind is blown by the relationship that David, as a young shepherd, had with God the Father. Of course, he didn't know who Jesus was at that time, but, but you can see Jesus. You can see grace in Psalm 23 so much. So I would encourage you, when you are alone with yourself, read it out of your phone, you know, Psalm 23, or out, out of the, the Bible book, Psalm 23, and realize that that is about you and your relationship with the Father. So when David's out there tending the sheep, he writes this psalm. It's like a poem. It's like, I don't know what else you would call it. But it has some really good, like a, like a beat to it. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Now, I, I did write some things down, okay? Because I was thinking about all of you. But I want you to know that speaking to you about the fact that I've read that psalm so many times and Rumi and I are just now starting to talk about what does it mean? It's one thing about saying it and, uh, and then amen. But did we really think about what God is telling us in Psalm 23? It's, it's for us forever. 
Psalm 23. So the Lord is my shepherd. That means that, that God is willing to be at your side at all times. We are his sheep. We are his sheep. Now through Jesus Christ, we are his sons and daughters. But God knows our voice, just like a shepherd knows the voice of his sheep. It's interesting that the sheep is like a very, I can assure you that if we were around a bunch of sheep, we would not be afraid because they are very gentle, smelly, but gentle, right? Sheep cannot do anything without their shepherd. That's amazing. Can't do anything without their shepherd. Their shepherd has to show them where to go eat. The shepherd has to go show them where to drink water. And you know, a sheep will not eat anything unless the shepherd leads them to. They would starve. And they will not drink from water that is rushing, like a stream or a river. It ha the water has to be still, quiet, no commotion. We all know that. So the Lord is our shepherd. The Lord Jesus Christ is our shepherd. What does that mean? John 3, 16. That's our shepherd. If we have not given our hearts to Christ, we're not his sheep yet. Wow. We're only sheep if we receive Christ as Lord and Savior. Because then that gives him, the shepherd, the right to start leading us and guiding us and giving us his Holy Spirit to guide us. Just like Psalm 23 says. Now, I bet you never thought about that, have you? I heard some of these things, and it makes, it makes very good biblical sense. God does not push himself on us. He wants us to become his sons and daughters, his sheep. We're, when we say sheep, we're not talking about little of sheep, okay? God has just given us an analogy that when the sheep are listening to their shepherd and being guided by the shepherd, then when we become his sons and daughters and we yield to him, the Holy Spirit guides us and directs our pathways every day. We learn to how to trust him, how to relinquish our um, I'm right and you're wrong or you know especially in husband wife relationships because sometimes that can that can get a little tricky right but that's between friends that can be between sisters or brothers the Holy Spirit is teaching us how to live with each other now David isn't it interesting how David wrote Psalm 23 when he was a teenager. And you know, he was a shepherd at a very young age for the sheep. Because you remember when, when um, Samuel came to David's dad seeking uh, one of his sons to anoint as king, he anointed David, but all the other sons thought that it was one of them because David, he was a shepherd. He smelled like sheep. What would God want to do with him? Oftentimes, don't sell yourself short. God has a plan for your life. Trust him. Pray about it. Tonight or today, where you are, say, Lord, I know 
if I'm not a sheep yet, if I'm not your son or daughter, I want to be. I give myself to you. And if you're already a son and daughter, say, I don't know which way to go, Father God, but I give myself to you and I know your spirit will lead me. Help me, my belief to grow. Help my belief to grow. Well, David wrote Psalm 23. And you know, as a shepherd, he saved his sheep from many wild beasts. Now, I understand uh, during that time that there, there might have been lions or, or I'm not sure about a bear, but uh, can you imagine him going against such things? And you know what? He's, he had a slingshot and his rod. You know, that, um, shepherds always had a, had a rod that they would take so they could, so they could uh, put a, uh, just like my wife <laughs> takes this. Let me see that. Let me see that green stick, okay? Let's see this. This is a massage stick. But imagine this being longer, longer, maybe six, seven feet tall and, and thicker. David would have one of these and if uh, a sheep got tangled up or on the side of a hill, you could put the, this around the head of the sheep and pull them out or pull them up. And the other thing you use it for is to beat off beasts that would attack the sheep. And uh, primitive weapons, slingshot, primitive weapon. But who can tell me what was used to kill Goliath? Can you tell me? He used the, the uh, slingshot, right? Well, when he wrote this psalm, we believe that the Spirit inspired him to write the psalm. So, I'm going to read it to you, okay? And if you have your Bibles, you can go with, along with me. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now, what does that mean, I shall not want? I used to think that. What does that mean, I shall not want? It just means that you won't want anything more. You don't need anything more. Exactly. I don't need anything more. All I need is my Lord and my God. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. What does that mean? Well, you know, the sheep had to eat. But many times, the shepherd watched over them while they were eating. And this was a restful time. They would lay down because they had no fear. The shepherd was there. Can you think of yourself being what sheep, needing God to watch over you? Don't we sometimes, many times, pray that God will watch over us tonight when we are sleeping in the bed? Of course we do. We're his sheep. We're his sons and daughters. We belong to him. He leads me beside the still waters. That means that what we were talking about, sheep will not drink out of water that is moving. I don't know why, but they are just very fearful. They're very timid. So they won't drink out of shifting water or rushing water. The water has to be calm, okay? And then he restores my soul. Right now, the Holy Spirit is involved in restoring your soul and mine. Right now, as we are talking and listening, I might be talking and you're listening, but at the same time, we're being restored in his image.
He restores my soul and he leads me on the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Praise God. We have no righteousness of our own. It's only the righteousness of Jesus. Imagine, this was, this was written a thousand years, maybe more, uh, than when Jesus came upon the earth. And yet, it's like Jesus is there right now in Psalm 23. And it talks about, he leads us on the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Though I walk through the valley of being locked up because of coronavirus, I will fear no evil. See, we can put some personal things in some of these scriptures. It's not, it's not, it's not making the scriptures non-valid. It's making the scriptures mean more personal uh, meanings to you. So put yourself in the picture of this psalm. Put your name in it when you're reading it. So, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I, Jim, will fear no evil. For his rod and his staff, they comfort me. Remember the rod I just showed you? A similar weapon that David had? Even though we're going through a rough place. Just imagine. Now Psalm 91 is really good too. Psalm 23. Oh, it's a good one to remember and say every day and pray over it. I will fear no evil for you, Father God, are with me. You are with me. I, I am loved by you. I am the apple of your eye just like David, King David was. As Jesus is with you, so am I. Praise God. And Father, it's amazing that through all of the situation of what we are going through, you have prepared a table for me. <laughs> a table, bread and wine, like communion, isn't it? It's anointing my head with oil giving me peace, renewing my mind, renewing my body, renewing my spirit within me by your spirit. Oh, Father, there's nothing I can do. You're doing all of it. I'm just receiving it. Thank you. And then he says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. How, how, ever how many years that God has planned for us to live. He's always with us. Never away from us. You are known by God. Your name is known by God. He knows how many hairs you got on your head. You got more than me, that's for sure. He knows everything about us. And when John 3.16 is written for us, and Jesus, I told you before, Jesus quoted this verse to Nicodemus, who was like Saul before he became Paul. Did you know Nicodemus, after Christ was crucified, he became a Christian too. But he came at night to ask Jesus, who are you really? We know you are a rabbi. You're a teacher. You notice Jesus didn't get caught up in the conversation. He just says, you must be born again. What? I mean, you notice Jesus never got involved in their conversations. He always turned it around. 
and help them to think about salvation. So Nicodemus was convicted in the future, and he also became a Christian, and he knew Saul. Saul was in the Sahedron and was a Pharisee. God has his place in all of what's happening right now in the world. You better believe God knows where you are right now. Where you're at your homes in Indonesia, in New Zealand, and we're here in California and Medan, wherever you are, I want to give you assurance. I mean, deep down from the heart of Uncle Jim and your brother in law and your son in law, it, I am convicted that Christ is coming soon. And there's a reason that we are getting together like this. It's, it's good that we can't. One of my best friends, some of you may know him, Steve Fusa. Two days ago, his son had, Steve woke up or sometime during the day, it was almost like he had a stroke. And his son, Marcos rushed him down to the emergency room in Loma Linda Hospital. And uh, his blood pressure was running very high. And today we found out that his blood pressure w went real high, of course. And they were thinking he had had a stroke. But they did all these tests they do, MRI scans, We've been praying, lifting him up in prayer. And today I found out from Marcos that he will probably be coming home today. Well, today now it's nighttime, but tomorrow. And his speech is almost back totally. How wonderful. And, and Steve and I have always witness to each other about our relationship with Jesus. But it's amazing how in the last two, three years, it's become more profound to us, more important. I mean, it was important before, but to us now, it is so much real. So my, I don't know how you perceive all of this what I've said to you, that is, that is your, your freedom. Your freedom is to open your heart or not open your heart. But God would hope that you will open your heart and receive Christ as your Savior. And if you have already done so, just know it's okay. We blow it. We blow it sometimes. We don't do the right thing sometimes. It's not about doing right. It's about who you believe in. Our, our, when we come up before the, for Jesus, he's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. It's not going to be about what we did or didn't do. It's just receiving Christ and what he's already done. That's the important thing. Amen? God bless all of you, okay? So next time you read Psalm 23, do it as a husband and wife. Do it as a family. Do it slow and ask everyone, have everybody respond on what they think that means. And get Google. Google, uh, you can Google anything. Psalm 23 and, and read about the thoughts that other people have written about Psalm 23. It's very, very informational and educational. God bless all of you. Love you.